So I wanted to do a quick video for those of you that are interested in the 80 gallon uh, air compressor from Vever. I hadn't find anything online about the compressor. Um, very happy with the performance, pretty quiet overall. 15.5 uh, CFM is excellent, can handle HVLP sprayers. Uh, we use it in my automotive shop at my home office. And uh, this was replacing an older uh, single stage uh, three horsepower. So this is a six and a half horsepower uh, dual stage uh, air compressor with 80 gallon reserve. Uh, one thing to note is it does say it runs on three phase. So many of you may be thinking I've only got 220 single phase and I'm not gonna be able to use this compressor. That is not true. Uh, you can purchase for $165 from Vever, a VFD, variable frequency drive. Uh, which takes the input from 220 here on the left and outputs uh, to three-phase. One thing to note, if you uh, wire that third leg with a reverse, the motor will run in reverse. You can see there's an arrow on here. Uh, there's also a control feature here for turning it up and down. So what we did is we started this at the lowest level for RPM, turned it in run mode, and we noticed uh, at first, if you take this uh, exhaust port here, it was creating vacuum, which meant it was running in the wrong direction. So we went in and actually went into the parameters. There's two options to fix that. One is you reverse two of the wires on the three phase output, and that will give you the motor direction in the right direction. Or what we did is simply went into the programming and we change one of the parameters for reversing and uh, we reverse the polarity on that output and boom, worked perfectly fine. Um, so there's a pretty basic settings actually to uh, get this up and running. This is the Vever AT1 7500X, 10 horsepower. Now this is a six and a half. Do not undersize your VFD or it won't last. Uh, you need to oversize it slightly and then you program it for the frequency. So there was a couple of parameters that we had to change and I'll go over those here in, in a moment and then I'll show you specifically how we made those changes in there. And by the way, if you're not familiar with electrical, uh, I would not recommend doing the wiring yourself. Hire a certified electrician uh, to do the wiring for you to get the, this wired up. And uh, they can also do the programming if you show them this video. Um, so there's a lot of parameters. I believe there's like 178 different parameters. Uh, we're not using the brake function. This is literally just turn on the motor, get it spinning. Uh, but you do have to change the parameter P0108 to 60 hertz. It comes default for European standard at 50 hertz. And so P01.10 is another one that needs to be changed. These are the highlighted to 60 hertz. Upper limit frequency of point uh, P0.1.12 also needs to be changed. And then we also took it uh, on the acceleration and deceleration time it defaults at 20 seconds. Uh, we reduced that to 10. This is the input uh, rise that happens when you start the motor, so inrush current. Actually, with a compressor, you kind of want to turn it on a little quicker. We dropped it down to 10 seconds. Uh, you can go even lower than that and, and, and turn the compressor on a little bit faster. The slow ramp with the compression that's in there you know, it puts a little extra strain on the motor, in my opinion. So we suggest that you change that. Um, the motor RPM max, uh, we did set that to 3,400 RPM. That was what Vever gave us for the max RPM. So we changed P02.04 and P02.05 to 3,400 um, and those were basically the uh, parameter changes that needed to be done on this uh, for it to work properly. So uh, just to walk you through the programming, uh, you hit program. Now P010, if I want to go over, I hit enter. And then I hit the up or down arrows. In this case, I'm going to go up to P08. And you'll see that I've set this and I hit enter to 60 hertz. If I need to make a change to that, um, you can change the parameter there. I hit enter, P010. So this is how you increment through. And obviously that was the one that we needed to change. And we hit enter again. And then the P01012 as I showed in the manual. Uh, then if I hit program again, program again, that takes me back to the home. And if I hit up, P02. So this is where I go into the other parameters and hit enter. 
and they do the incremental change there to get to P02 dot whatever I have given you earlier in this uh, presentation. When you're done, you hit program twice and you're back to the home screen. The display button, in this case, I'm giving the uh, frequency that it's seeing right now from the input side. I can show uh, the voltage output and then I can show uh, amperage as well. Um, whoops. And that's it. When you're ready to fire up the, uh, the compressor, you're going to simply hit the run button and you'll see the ramp. As I mentioned, it takes full five, uh, 10 seconds to ramp up, but let me turn that on so you can see how that operates. And I will show you the RPM. This is still set to allow me to adjust the RPM, but in this case, I've tapped it off at 3,400 RPM. It will not go above 3,500 RPM to avoid damaging the motor. So in this case, that's the uh, output that it's going to send over. In this case, the uh, air has been set and it's at the limit, so it's not going to open the control to turn it on. Uh, but that gives you an idea, as you can see, that it will not top off. I can adjust this with the jog function up or down a little bit. I left it at about 3370, just slightly below the top end. Uh, and it works great. It fills the tank in about six minutes from completely empty. Uh, and it maintains control of all of my tools really, really nicely. So if you're uh, thinking about this Vever 80 horsepower uh, system, I would, I would recommend that, uh, I highly recommend it. It's very quiet. Uh, this is diaphragm pump system. It's got four compression pumps. Um, a little louder than some of the ones that you get, you know, at the store. I think Home Depot sells Quiet Air, uh, California Air Tools sells a very similar system. Um, but overall, uh, it's like 70 dB, which is quite a bit less than a normal air compressor uh, that you'd have with a, with a belt drive. A lot more reliable. I, I expect the hours to be somewhere around 50,000 hours. It is oilless, so it does not have any uh, lubrication requirements. Uh, one thing you have to keep uh, maintained with these with vibration. Um, I did notice um, there are rubber feet underneath for the vibration of the motor, which I really liked. It isolated it from the tank. Uh, and so I expect this to last uh, quite a while.